In Syria this week, the U.S.-led coalition carried out two strikes against pro-government forces. Pentagon officials say they posed a threat to U.S. troops and their allies in the south of the country. The coalition destroyed additional pro-Syrian regime forces that advanced inside the well-established deconfliction zone in southern Syria on June 6th. The United States conducted strikes against two technical vehicles, pickup trucks with weapons that were assessed to be posing a threat to coalition and partner forces based at Atanaf Garrison. Well, the airstrikes took place in the strategically important area of Al Tanf. It lies on a direct route from Syria through Iraq to Iran. All parties in the conflict have been operating there, though it's crucial for several pro government groups. The aims of these operations are not announced by the Syrian army, but a senior source in the Syrian army says that the army has main goals, and these main goals is to completely regain control of all the deserts connecting Syria and Iraq, which will allow the army to actually prevent or deny uh, the, the argument and uh, used by the U.S.-led coalition and by the U.S.-backed rebels that they are moving in the deserts of central Syria trying to actually eliminate ISIL. And the Syrian army would like to beat them into eliminating ISIL, achieving two goals at once eliminating ISIL, connecting with Iraq, and consequently actually cornering the U.S.-backed rebel groups and the U.S. presence in Syria. And I think this is why the U.S. carried out this second airstrike in a matter of days, actually, against Syrian army, or at least pro-Syrian army units, to try and say that they, will, uh, they are here in Syria to stay and they are going to defend their presence uh, on Syrian territories, though this presence was never invited by the Syrian government. And the coalition also hit pro-Assad forces in the same area last month. In response to that attack, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned his American counterpart Rex Tillerson against targeting pro-government forces again. He also scolded Washington over the so-called deconfliction zone and pointed out the U.S. had established the area without consulting Damascus. I'm not aware of the deconfliction zones the Pentagon is referring to. Maybe there are zones that have been established unilaterally where the coalition thinks it can do whatever it wants. We don't recognize such zones. As you know, there are already de-escalation zones that have been agreed on and established by Syria, Iran, Turkey and Russia. Any steps by the coalition which don't receive consent from Damascus are not legitimate. I think that the sovereignty of that government should have been respected. I don't think that uh, we as a country should be involved over there. That's been my position generally as a, as a libertarian, that we should be so much less involved over there. And this is a good example of getting involved when uh, it looks like uh, there's, there's an attempt to de-escalate the war and uh, sort some of these things out, but our position is sort of bizarre because uh, at one moment we're uh, against ISIS, the next moment we do things that uh, actually helps ISIS and I think this circumstance of those bombs uh, that we bombed actually was helpful to ISIS so therefore I think it's uh, a bad policy on our part and doesn't help the situation in Syria. Next on RT, it's Worlds Apart.